All right, so for your caricature, <clears throat> this is what we're going to be doing. Is we're taking a um, a regular photo of someone. Let me just scoot this one to the top so you can see. So here's the original picture of Steve Buscemi, and what I've done is I've modified it. And what we want to do is find someone with very unique features, and we want to enhance those features. Um, and kind of exaggerate them, okay, like you would see in a caricature. So for Steve Buscemi, uh, I found that his you know his forehead is kind of big and his eyes are kind of big, and to kind of emphasize those items, I shrunk his nose and shrunk his mouth a little bit. Okay, so you can see the look of that. It's still recognizable as Steve Buscemi, uh, but he is uh, obviously been caricatured. All right, and his head is also a bit smaller too. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing. So your first step in this is to find someone. Now you're not going to use the same one that I'm using. You're going to find um, a different person. So you're going to use Google and you'll type in just a character. Maybe you like um, uh, use Steve Buscemi as an example just to start. Okay. So let's say you like Steve Buscemi. I would go to images and I would go to my search tools, size, and I would set this to be pretty large. Okay, the final file size of this is going to be 10 inches by 10 inches by 200 pixels. Okay, so our character, our image, has to be 2,000 pixels um, in one direction. So that's what we want to do: is say larger than, and you can see how we can set this to different properties. So I want to say larger than 4 megapixels. Okay, and usually you'll find something pretty decent. So there's. The image that I found to use for this one, right? So um, you want to go through and just find someone. So let's say Adam Sandler. Okay, our search is still doing larger than four megapixels. We want to get something that has some good framing. So like this one here, where his head is cut off and his chin is cut off, that's no good. This one where his hat is in the frame and this is here, that might be a good image to use. Um, but you want to find something that's very recognizable as them and something that you can really work with. Um, something from a movie like this is very hard to work with just because it's you know might be a little bit grainy um, and he's also he's making a face already so you have to kind of be able to work with that face if we have something like this where he's posing or that where he's posing that could work better okay here where he's looking down that's not really going to add to the scene of it okay so you want to find a good um, person that you could utilize. Here, here's another one that could be um, used. Um, someone like Owen Wilson. You know, he has very distinct features. His eyes are really small. His mouth is really small. Um, his nose is a bit bigger. So you could actually, you know, expand his nose and shrink his mouth, shrink his eyes, you know, do that. Give him really big hair. Um, that's a possibility as well. Okay. So your first step in this is just to find an image big enough. Now see this one is probably Besides being cut, you know, it's not very good. This one, he's cut, so it's not very good. This one, he's pretty much straight on, so that could be one that you'd want to use, okay? Um, I like to find one more like this, where it gives you a little bit more freedom, especially around the shoulders, um, to play with, okay? And even though this is only, you know, it's 19, 20 pixels, that's close enough to 2,000 that we could utilize that, okay? So when you find one, you're not just going to right-click on this. You want to go to View Image, okay? Make sure you're getting the largest image, and then you can right-click and save the image. And then you want to put that into your folder. So I'm going to make a new folder in here, caricature. And I'll call this Owen Wilson. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. That's your first step, is just to find an image. Maybe you want to find several images, too. Okay. Um, Robin Williams. Okay, so you can find a good image of Robin Williams to use uh, for something like this. Billy Crystal. Again, spell things right. Okay, and you can use you know different things and just try things out. Sometimes you'll find that the image you chose really doesn't lend a whole lot to it. Um, your base. Okay, now you can't find someone who is just like you know already featured. Um, already has a caricature features to them. You want to find someone who 
you know, they have some slight features, but you really want to exaggerate those features, okay? And you have to have the exaggeration part. Um, that's the that's the trick to this, okay? So let me just reset my uh, stuff here. All right, so my first step in doing this is I've opened up my Steve Buscemi um, JPEG, and I've just double-clicked the image and just made it as a new layer, okay? And then what I want to do is use the pen tool. I'm going to use the pen tool, and I want to outline um, our character. Okay, so I'm just going to start down here, and you don't want to be zoomed in like that. You want to have a good distance from it. So I'm just going to click, and I'm just going to create an outline of it. Okay, and if I need to change direction, remember I hold Alt, and I can change the direction of that line. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and just outline this as best I can. Okay, now I want to. I'm going to hold the space bar to move. Uh, I want to get as close to the character as I can, um, and as few points as I can. In some of these areas, you need to add a lot of points just because of what's happening. So, um, if it takes you ten times to do it, then do it ten times. Um, you want to make sure you get a nice, clean. Uh, path with this. You can see there's a couple of spraggly hairs here. I'm just going to pass those up. Um, if you don't have a nice clean path, then you're going to run into issues later. Okay. So this is the first step, is just getting a nice clean path. Okay. And I'm not click, 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 clicking. I'm going through and I'm taking the time to pull out the handles. Skip. Oh, I'll get these guys here. Skip those couple hairs there. And I mentioned it before that the pen tool is one of those tools that you know you can't get away from. Uh, every application at some point um, is going to utilize the pen tool. This area I'm going to zoom in. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I want to make sure I capture that. You can see a lot of like, little hairs on his face. <clears throat> it's a really detailed picture. Um, I don't want to capture any of those. I'm just going to go and create a really rough, uh, not really rough, but a uh, simplified version of this. Okay, I can hold control remember and move that around. shirt also, not just his head, but his shirt. And I could talk all day long about the pen tool and how it works and you know going over every single feature of it, um, but realistically it's just going to be your experience in playing with it that's going to get you the understanding you're going to need. Okay, so over the bottom I don't care what the bottom looks like, so I'm just going to click, click, and then click there okay then I'm gonna go to my paths and I'm just gonna name this full uh, okay now I've already labeled one here's my other full one that I created before all right so there's the full body so now what I need to do is I need to create uh, one for the shirt okay so if you look at the one that I created for the shirt before you can see how it's just like this big this big block right here I also did the head like this, where I've isolated that too. Okay. Now you'll see when I do these how um, how I really just have to be accurate in certain spots. So this is the shirt. So I'm just going to go through and outline that shirt area because I want to be able to separate 
Steve from his um, his clothing. Oops. I should put a point here. There we go. Alright, now once I've passed um, the neck area, I can just go boom, 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 like that. Okay, that will be the shirt. Okay, and now I'm going to do the head. Okay, so I'm basically I'm skipping the neck area. And this is just, you know, it's there's no line right here. I'm just kind of following his his jaw wherever that ends up. Okay. Once I end up out there, click, 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 and click. Head path. Okay. So now that I have the full body, the shirt, and the head path, what I can use is these three to kind of isolate some of these other areas. So going back to my layers, I have this cutout folder where I've cut out, let me hide this, the head, uh, the neck, just turn that off, and the shirt, okay? So that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go to my paths here, and I'm going to control click the full body, okay? That will give me everything that's inside there. So then I want to copy um, turn that cutout layer off. I want to copy this. So I'm going to go to layer new and I'm going to say layer via copy. Okay? And you'll see what I get there as I get Steve being cut out. Now there's no feathering or anything on it. I could do all my feathering and stuff later on. Okay? Right now I'm just going to leave it pretty much where it is. Okay? Uh, if I feather it now then later I can't feather it and that would be, you know, uh, an issue. All right, so I have this. This is full. Go back to my paths. Now I need to cut the head off. So if I cut it like this, you can see how it's going to grab the background too. Well, I can use this full body as a way to help isolate this. So if I hold down Control, Alt, and Shift, you'll see that the little icon becomes an X. And what that means is intersect. So as I can click on that, you'll see how it isolates the head because where this path and this path intersected where they overlapped, it's going to select just that region. So now I can go back to my layers, back to my layer one, and say layer new, layer via copy. Okay, and now I have this head. Back to the paths. I'm going to do the same thing for the um, shirt here. So I control click the shirt, control alt shift the full body and then make sure I'm on the correct layer layer one layer new layer via copy and again I can just go to control J okay and then I want to do the neck as well so right now if I look at this go. I have his head and I have his shirt I don't have his neck yet so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do this one so if I control click that one and I control click, control shift click that one. You can see that it gives me this area, but not the neck. Um, and then if I, you know, try to do that thing with this one, I'm going to get this and this, but not the neck. So here's how I do this I'm going to control click the full body, and I'm going to control option or alt click the shirt away, control alt or option click the head away, and I'm left with just the neck. So I'm going to go back here, back here, control J and there we go All right. now there is a slight uh, you know like a one pixel gap right there All right. so I may want to go back and just um, also while I'm doing this is to just go through and grab one that is um, uh, more of this okay so if I grab the full body and I just subtract the head that will give me the shirt and the neck okay so I'm going to grab that too. This one called neck. Uh, go 
into this layer, control J, as a shirt with neck. Okay, I'll do the same thing for the head. So I'm gonna control click the full body, control alt click the head path, oops, sorry, the shirt path away. I'll subtract the shirt, and I can just go to this layer, control J, and say head with neck. Okay, so now if I look at this, um, I have one with the head and neck, I have one with the shirt and neck, one with just the neck, one with the shirt, one with the head, and then this full one cut out. Okay, so I want to take these ones here, all the ones I've used to cut stuff out, I'm going to go to my uh, thing here, my options, and do new group from layers. I'm going to call this cut out. Okay, and then I'm just going to save this as a uh, Steve Buscemi cut out PSD. So whatever your guy is, you'll save it as that PSD. Then I'm going to make a new document. This is going to be our final document we're going to work in. Okay. So like I said, we're going to deal with um, this as a 10 inch by 10 inch image. And our resolution is going to be um, 200 pixels. Okay. So now I want to take this cutout and I'm just going to right click and duplicate it. I'm going to send it over to that other one that we just created, the untitled. Okay, so now it's over inside of here and I can turn these things on. Now you'll see that he is huge inside of this image. Yours is going to be a different size, so you just you know, figure out what size yours is going to be. So I'm going to hit Control T and I'm going to shrink him down to an appropriate size. Okay, I don't want him super small because if I scale him back up it's going to be, you know, um, pixelated. So about here, there we go, about there is probably a good size. Okay, if I shrink him down that's fine. I probably wouldn't make him bigger inside this. Okay, so now that we have this cutout group, let me just rename this cutout uh, original or orange, O-R-I-G. I'm going to duplicate this and I'll just turn that one off. I like to have this one as my backup in case I mess up. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to start cutting this up even further. Okay, So I want to look at this and see what features I want to cut out of him. So like his eye, I know I want to cut. So I want to cut both of his eyes out. But I can't just like go, let's say I go with my marquee tool, I can't just marquee his eye like this because I'm going to get part of his nose. I can't marquee this eye like that because I'm going to get part of his nose. Okay, I want to isolate his nose. I can't just do that because I'm going to again get his eyes now. Okay, so I want to start to isolate these uh, in areas. I also have to look at the fact that I need to blend these things in. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through with my magnetic lasso, and you can see how I can create these shapes going around like this, like that. Okay. Now if that doesn't give me what I need, I can use my regular lasso tool and just kind of outline the shape. I could also use the pen tool, I could also use you know, several different items to start selecting these things. So I'm going to outline this eye. And I'm going to come in here and you can see I'm going to grab a pretty big circle around this eye. Okay, something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. So I'm on my full one for now. And I'm just going to hit um, Control J, and I'm going to call this one. Uh, for us, it's our left, but for him, it's his right. So I'm going to say right eye. Okay, so that's his right eye. And I'm going to come down here and get pretty close to the nose there. There we go. I'm going to go way out because I can. And I'm going to do a Control J, make sure I'm on the full. And this is his left eye. Right, then I can go in. I can use the polygon or the magnetic lasso tool for his nose here, because it'll really kind of attach, you know, pretty good to that line. All right, I'm gonna come up here and hit enter. Now I have his nose. Control J. Oops. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in here for his lips. And I'm going to do the lips separately. If I grab them both at the same time, it's going to distort it 
it's not going to look very nice. So I'm going to grab top lip, control J, and I'll grab the bottom lip. Enter. There we go. Control J on that. Oops. Okay. So let's start with these ones here. Okay. So now that I have these um, cutouts, let me show you what I've had so far. So you can see how I'm just kind of like piecing together these different things. Okay. So anytime I need to make cutouts, I'm going to come into this group, into this cutout original group, which I'm going to rename cutout uh, level two. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to duplicate them. And pull that up. There we go. And I'm going to make a new group with these. I'm going to call it the deforms. Okay, and that's where I'm going to start deforming stuff is on these layers. So what I want to do is look at this as a one at a time type thing and start deforming these pieces and then I can start blending them in together. Okay, so uh, for this right eye, we're going to go to um, filter and we're going to be using liquify. Okay, so with liquify, let me just zoom in just too much. There we go. Uh, there's several different tools here. This first one is just this warping tool where I can just click and drag and it'll distort the pixels. Okay. Um, this next tool is the reconstruct tool. So after we've done this and we've kind of ruined it a bit, we can go back and reconstruct it to get it back to where it originally was. Uh, let's see, that's the smooth tool, just smoothing out some of those things, the clockwise tool, the pucker tool, the bloat tool. This is one we're going to be using, all right? Now, um, there's also these masks in here, freeze masks, thaw masks. So if I freeze an area, so for this, I'm going to freeze, let's say his pupil. So I don't want his pupil to get uh, distorted. I want his pupil to pretty much stay the same. I just want everything else around it to start moving. Okay. So I'm just painting with a brush inside here. There we go. So now when I go into, let's say, the bloat tool and I start to expand this, you can see how it's expanding everything except for that pupil. Okay. Now obviously this is going too crazy with this. We don't want to go enormous on it. We want it to look um, exaggerated, but not like crazy. So let me just erase that for now. Okay. So there we go. So I'm just doing, I'm just clicking. There's very uh, subtle clicking right in the center. Then I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so now you can see that this eye is just become enormous, right? And that's what we want, right? We want that eye to become enormous. So now we can go to the left eye. We'll do the same thing. Liquify. Again, I zoomed in too far. And let me do show backdrop. Showing backdrop, I can see what the other eye looks like behind. There we go. Oops. You can see I went a little bit too far on this. Let me undo some of this. No, let's try that again. Pucker. I don't want it to look enormous. You know, I want it to look uh, somewhat natural. There we go. That's close enough. All right, so now his eyes are a bit bigger. Um, now let's take our cutout here. I want to take um, the full one, and I'm just going to copy that and just drag it into this here. Okay, and turn that on. So you can see, just by not even doing a whole lot of work, 
that already it's looking like he has big eyes. Okay, and that's like I said, that's our goal in this is to make it look like he has big eyes. Now we could soften some of these areas here where it's looking a little bit, you know, bulky, but we'll see what we need to do. Um, especially if I zoom in, you can really see right there, I can see a definite line of where this has been manipulated. Okay, so we'll deal with that um, further on. All right, so that's that part. Now let's go to the nose, and I'm going to go to uh, liquify again and in this one I'm gonna use the pucker tool and again you don't want to go crazy with this you just want to do some slight manipulation okay and this is where we're really gonna start seeing some of the stuff that we have to start tweaking I may also want to go to the warp tool and start to just tweak what that's looking like Okay, let me turn off the backdrop. So we're just going to keep going with this. Now I can also um, zoom in on that again. There we go. Okay. Uh, use that tool just to kind of tweak some of the shape of this. Use my hotkeys to shrink the brush down. All right, there we go. Now keep in mind too, if this goes too small, uh, doesn't really work, whatever, we can always go and re-get that nose because it's right here. So if we destroyed this one, no big deal. We can always get it back. Okay. So now you can see. Okay, that's not really looking like it's blended here. Now we have a second nose back there. So this is where we have to start tweaking the shape of the face in order to get all the stuff to happen. All right. So um, I'm also going to copy in the head. So let me just duplicate this and drag the head inside here. Turn that on. And um, I use typically I want to use this last. All right. But what we're going to be using is this head in order to push this head and kind of shape it so that all this stuff lines up correctly. All right. So let's go down to the top lip and again liquify and I'm going to this is a slight one just shrink it a little bit okay if that's too strong I come over here to the density and just start to lower the density okay. or even lower the rate there we go. One, one. There we go. Okay, so just subtle. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So now is top lip. And obviously, it's a bit smaller. Okay. Bottom lip. We'll do the same thing. So now I can go in here, here's the bottom lips cut out, the top lips oops, cut out. <clears throat> now I'm going to go to the head copy and I'm going to liquefy this. And with this I'm going to say show backdrop in front. And now I can look at this, oopsie daisy. And I'm not concerned really with the lines right here because I can fade that in. I'm more concerned with this kind of stuff where the head is obviously there's two heads there. So I'm going to go in with this um, pushing tool, and I'm going to start to push stuff around. Now I want to focus on one at a time. So let's say, uh, have this neck. That's his original cutout nose. I want to grab the next nose down here. There it is. With that nose, you can see how I can tweak this and just start pushing this stuff in until his face is lining up with his new nose. Okay, now if there's something I need to adjust, I can adjust that further afterwards too. There we go. And then I can go with his left eye, see what that looks like. Go with his right eye, see what that looks like. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna hit okay. 
Now you can see that his nose, even though it's not perfect yet, is looking much better. Okay, and I can go back with the liquify tool. And let's look at his top lip. Okay, now again, this is just focusing in on his top lip and his top lip only. Here it is 100% with that old one. There it is with our new one. Behind it. Okay, so I'm just kind of pulling this stuff down. Because I shrunk his lip, I need to create um, more of this upper lip in order for that all to kind of line up correctly. All right, you have to be careful with this. I can't just street, street, street because um, it will actually start distorting the pixels too much. Like his his um, stubble here will start looking funny. All right, let's try that. So here is the top lip. You can see that looks pretty good. The bottom lip is going to need some work. Okay, so now we'll go back to the head copy. And let me turn these heads off. Sometimes that'll help too, and I can really investigate to see what's going on. Let me turn this off. There we go. And you can see, because I shrunk them, um, that they're actually a little bit lower. So I can take this up and close the mouth off. And now that looks much better. Put this other head on. And now it's just a matter of blending these two things together, and blending these two things together. Okay, so I'm going to just keep going through here um, and tweaking this. Now, I think I'm actually at a point <clears throat> where, you know, this has really come together pretty good. I want to exaggerate the head a bit more. Let's put the head layer, go back to liquify. And this is going to be, again, a subtle thing that I do, kind of enhancing the size of his forehead. So let me turn this backdrop off. And essentially we're, we're actually spreading out the pixels so we do have to be careful that we don't spread them out too much. If I hold this down it's going to really stretch these pixels out and it's not going to look natural. It's going to look like we use the liquify tool on there. Okay. So again we want to be very very subtle and very soft with how we deform this. Okay, hit OK, and now we're starting to look pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> there's a couple of things I'm not liking so far. Obviously, the eyes need to be blended in more. His eyebrows seem to have gotten smaller. I think I want to bushy up the eyebrows, so I'm going to cut those off too. Okay, so now I'm going to go through. Um, here's the right eye. Okay, I'm going to put a layer mask on that, and then I'm just going to go with my brush, and here's kind of an organic brush. This is splotchy one. Um, these ones work pretty good too, just to kind of blend things in um, and so it doesn't look perfectly you know, lined. So I'm just brushing this just to kind of blend that in. There we go. And I've taken a little bit of the eyebrow off. I don't care about that right now because again I can pull it back if I need to. Uh, but eventually I want to replace the eyebrow. Okay. So now I'm just kind of going through and just softening the edge. I may need to take my opacity down or my flow down. Take the flow down. There we go. Okay. And I always look back and forth, back and forth to see if I'm, you know, missing anything. It's good. Let's go to left eye. Make a layer mask. And I'm just painting black where I want to get rid of stuff. That's all I'm doing. Right. I'm seeing a line here, and I didn't know where that was coming from. It looks like it's probably coming from the nose area. And that's the hardest part about this, just trying to figure out where this stuff is coming from. If it's the case, you can turn everything off pretty much, like that. Uh, so we're just left with this, and then we can look at it and see. 
Now here, I'm actually seeing like pixels bleeding through. That's something else we'll have to fix in a different way. Okay, so we'll leave that. Let's go to the nose. Layer mask on this. Come on. We can blend this part in here. And there's a little knob sticking off the nose. I want to get rid of that. There we go. Okay, I'm not really liking this brush anymore. Okay. Change the hardness up a bit. And basically, it's just softening or taking too many chunks out of the nose. There we go. Okay, so that's good. And then here's the top lip. Again, layer mask. I'm going to start to blend some of this stuff in. Okay, so let's go back to the nose. I missed a little spot right here. A little spot right there. There we go. Good. And all right, here's the lower lip. Layer mask. Blend it in. Okay. Now here we have, you know, that same mole and we're actually getting like a repeating pattern there. We're going to have to do something different in that area. Okay. Um, here's our head copy. I don't think we need anything for that right at the moment. Uh, let's bring his body in. Let's see. Here's a shirt. Bring in the shirt by itself. That's what I want. Okay, and I'm going to make this a bit bigger, so I'm just going to just free transform it to make that a bit bigger. Okay, again, it's just exaggerating his head. Small head, big eyes. That's what I'm trying to do with that. Okay, bring the neck in. And the neck's going to be our transition between these two, so it's very important that we get the neck right. Let me just turn all this stuff is pretty much head stuff, so I'm just going to take this and just group it and call it head. There we go. Alright, so let me see the neck area that's here. Alright, the little spot right here, I'm just going to erase that. Alright, so now I'm going to hit. Um, Control T, and I'm going to hold the control key down and start to deform the shape. There we go. Something like that. Uh, that's not working right. Uh, I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to Edit, and under the Edit, there's a Puppet Warp. Okay, and the way the puppet warp works is there's basically this little mesh, and I can click on here and create pins. Okay, so I'm basically pinning things down, but then once I pin things down, then I can grab these pinned areas and start to stretch the pinned areas. Okay, so I'm just stretching this out in order to kind of shape this. Uh, so that we can get it to look like his um, his neck is very small or very um, big at the bottom and smaller at the top to accommodate his head. Okay, so I'm pinning as much stuff as I can down here to kind of hold this shape because I've already kind of sized the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> size that, and then I can just stretch this out here. And stretch this out here. And then hit enter when I'm done. And let me just move the head over. That. And I'm going to hit control T and just shrink the whole thing down. And before I do that, again, I like to kind of duplicate things. And I'll just stick this down here 
I can just call this head underscore BK for backup. In case I ruin this head, I have a backup of all the stuff that I've done. There we go. Okay, if I need to go and tweak the neck a little bit more, I can click the neck again, go back to my puppet warp, add some points along the bottom here. But the bottom's good, it's just a matter of that top area just needs a little bit more finessing. I don't want it to look like he has a fat neck, I want it to look like his neck is just really skinny here. Alright, I think I've kind of destroyed the neck, so delete the neck. Let's grab a new neck and bring it up. That's why we keep copies of things. That way at any point we can go through and just grab a new one. Okay. So again I'll erase this little part. I'm going to go to my puppet warp. I'm going to set this in place first. So this is going to be about here. And this guy is going to be about there. And this guy will be about here. This one will be back here. And these ones will be up there. This is the trickiest part, just kind of lining it up with this mesh on here. You have to, uh, you can turn the mesh off. Uh, sometimes it's easier to see it with the mesh or work with the mesh. I think I'm gonna need to scoot the whole thing forward, maybe even make it just a little bit bigger. I think it's just looking a little bit too comical right now. Rotated slightly also. Alright, so now I can take the head and just shift it a little bit. There you go. Okay. Now again we're gonna deal with the blending. So I'm gonna put a layer mask on my group here and just start to soften this transition in. Oops. You gotta be careful because I don't want to go uh, too much away from it. So right here, right at the edge, see how I'm blending in those pixels. Now if it starts to turn white, that just means I don't have enough information there. Okay, like right there, there's not enough information that far out, so I just have to be very careful staying this close to the edge. If I go too far, I can always paint it back in, right? So it's not the same exact look that we had in the other one, but it's nice. Uh, I'm going to go to the shirt copy also and go to the puppet warp. And I'm just going to set down some defining areas I don't want to move. And then I can grab these other areas I do want to move, and I can start to tweak these to get these into position. Okay. And if I see that this area is moving, I hit undo. Add a couple more pins to this just to lock it in. and then hit enter. Okay, So now it looks like this shirt is actually going around his neck. Alright, now the very top of this, uh, above all of this stuff, we're going to make a new layer and we're just going to use the clone stamp and just kind of clone stamp in some of this area that we want. Okay, oops, I forgot to do the uh, eyebrows. So let's go down here to his full head. I'm going to duplicate his full head. Pull it up here. Pull it above everything for right now. There we go. And I'm just going to use my lasso tool. I'm just marquee that eyebrow. Control J. Marquee this eyebrow. Control J. This will be his right eyebrow. This will be his left eyebrow. Okay. I'm done with this thing. I don't need that for right now, so I'm just going to hide it. I'm going to drop these into the deform group. 
obviously it's going to have to be up here, like above all this stuff, and inside the head group. There we go. All right. So then I can just take these one at a time and just start positioning them. All right. And I could even use, you know, some liquify on it if I wanted to start to enhance some of that. Let's get there. Let's go to the right eyebrow. Let's get it somewhat positioned. Go to liquify. And then we can just add our layer mask and just start blending it in. Alright, so we're just blending it in, just trying to uh, brush it on. Make sure I'm painting with black, that's why nothing's happening. You can see how powerful this tool is. Just um, it's immensely powerful when you start to utilize layer masks. And the cool thing is that if you know we go too far, we can always erase it. So everything you're going to do, um, as far as erasing goes, you should be using layer masks. Okay, because um, you never know when something's going to need to be changed, modified, revised, whatever. All right. So there's his new eyebrows. So there's the old ones. There's the new ones. You can see it look a little bit bushier. Well, they kind of add to um, the scene of it, okay? All right, so that's good. Um, what else? All right, so on this very top layer here, what we're going to do is just go through in any areas that we see that need a little bit of touch-up. Like right there, there's a white line, okay? Now, if I go to my right eye and I start to paint with the black, that may or may not get rid of that white line. There's still a tiny bit of a line there, okay? So what this top layer is for is meant to be these areas that are just losing a little bit of detail where we can go in with the clone stamp, make sure it's set to all layers. Yes, I know, I'm trying to shrink the brush down. There we go. And I'm going to just hold Alt and click and just try to patch in some of that, okay? Obviously my flow and opacity are way too high, so I need to knock those down to 5% or so. And I want to just grab some areas and just start to fill it in where um, I need it, okay? So if I see that I've really stretched an area out or there's just something like right here that needs to be fixed, I wanna use my clone stamp and just go through and start cloning it on that, on that layer. Okay, so I'm just going through and just very subtly just kind of brushing over that layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to add detail to it. Now you have to be careful that we don't go too soft of a brush. Uh, my hardness is up to about 80. If it's too soft, it'll actually look softer than it originally meant to. Okay, so we just go through all these areas. And you have to look at it from uh, zoomed out. You have to look at it from zoomed in. And you want to constantly be assessing it. If you need to, walk away from your computer. Um, come back, you know, in 10 minutes or so and and do it again. Take a look at it and see. Sometimes you're just kind of staring mindlessly at the computer um, at the same thing and nothing's changing. Okay. I like this highlight down here. Let me get rid of that. You can see in the neck right here, I've really lost a lot of detail. So I'm going to utilize his cheek. Okay. So I'm going to go here to his cheek. Uh, let's marquee. I'm just going to lasso an area here. And I'm just going to go Control Shift C and then Control V. Okay, remember Control Shift C will copy whatever I'm looking at. And what I can do is I'm going to put it down here on this neck area, rotate it a bit so that the grain of it's going kind of going the same way. And then what I can do is um, change the mode. I like to try the mode first and see if that works. Okay, so soft light might be doing it. Uh, I can take this down here, maybe to 20% or so. And you can see how I'm adding just a little bit of detail into that area. A little bit flat, and now it's going to have a little bit more to it. I can also keep it on normal, but do a level, so I hit Control L.
and I can adjust what this piece is looking like. Oops. Let me make sure my opacity is back up to 100. There we go. Then hit Control L. Okay, even going into the different channels, I can start tweaking what this is going to look like in here. Um, I can also simply just take the opacity down. Okay, and then just using a layer mask. Make sure my flow is down. Let's make sure my on a brush. Okay. And first, obviously, we want to cut parts off we don't need. So stuff like that we don't need. Stuff like this we don't really need. And the rest of this we can just kind of blend in with our flow here. Okay, and then you can see how I've added just a little bit more detail in that area. Um, and again, I can go to my adjustments and maybe even do a hue and saturation. If I need to darken it, I can go over here with my um, dodge and burn tool. Dodge will lighten areas, burn will darken areas. Make this layer on top. This is my my uh, fix ups. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm dodging and burning in this area. Now, because there's nothing on this layer, it's not going to dodge and burn anything. Um, so what I can do is I can actually just use my regular brush and set this to darken and as I do that you can see I'm basically darkening all those areas underneath it but again flows too high there we go so I can darken this area here or I can use the clone stamp Just trying to, you know, correct some of these areas that are just kind of a little bit wonky looking. There we go. All right, so that looked pretty good. All right, so let's go through, and then this one here is our um, throat patch. So we go through the entire thing, look at all these areas that may um, need to be corrected, and then we can start to correct these things. By the end of this, <clears throat> what we should have is this one group, okay? That's all our deformations, okay? We can see the original here at the top. Let's we'll call this original. And then we can see the deform. And it still looks like him. Someone looking at this image can say, oh, that's just Steve Buscemi, you know, really deformed. Um, that's what we want, okay? So, uh, yeah, so that's good there. Now his hair, you can see, is perfectly crisply cut out. So another thing I can do is I'm going to go to this head one. There we go. There's the head copy. Now again, I like to copy it so I don't ruin the original. And I can go into my smudge tool. Oops, wrong one. My smudge tool here. And I can start to pull out some of these hairs. Now I have to make sure that my um, hardness is up a bit. And this is down. So you can see how I can start to pull some of these hairs out. Okay. So if I see an area that's just looking a little bit too flat, I can start to go into this and just start to, you know, give it a little bit more shape. All right. And that will just add. You can see way out here, it's not going to look as grainy as it does. Uh, when we're zoomed in, but it just adds a nice level of detail to it, okay? If we get these areas that are just a little bit, you know, where we're seeing some of that background color, I want to put a layer mask on it, and I want to just go through with a small brush and just kind of paint out those areas, okay? Make sure I'm on a brush. Okay, 
I may need to take my flow up a bit just so it's a little bit quicker. Okay, we can soften this as we go. Obviously, if you have a tablet, this is a little bit easier to do because we're actually just painting instead of trying to use a mouse on this. Okay, so if you see these areas that um, have some transparency issues, we can start to cut those things out of there. Okay, and that will help also give us a little bit more realism um, in our end product. Right, just try not to go too soft on the brush um, or too hard on the brush because then it'll start to look uh, a little bit fake. Okay, you see how tiny the brush is here. I'm just going through and just painting out basically some of these individual hairs. Okay, and then I can come through with that smudge tool and I can start to pull out, oops, make sure I'm on the layer itself and not the layer mask. Start to pull out some of these hairs. Okay, and again, it'll just add a nice little level of realism to your scene um, to make it look like it's actually a person that they've deformed somehow. All right, I see a line right here I want to get rid of, so I'm going to go to my fix ups and go to my patches or my clone stamp, and I'm just painting this out here. I think this pie needs to just come back a little bit more and just blend in a little bit nicer. There we go. Alright, so that's good there. Alright, so he's pretty much done. I, there's still some work I could do in here, um, but I don't want to go through every single click I do on this. So the next stage is to find a cool image that will kind of... Um, set the scene for what you're doing. So um, I'm using Steve Buscemi, who's kind of like a, a creepy character. So I might want to create like you know, a graveyard scene or a night scene or something like that. Um, so let's see. Also, let me make sure that my image size here is still at that four megapixels or above. Okay, I don't want to grab like a cemetery as kind of neat but it's you know this isn't really telling a story it's just kind of like a nice cemetery this one is a little bit creepier okay so I'm gonna grab that one I want to make sure it's nice and clear okay and an actual image I think this might even be just like a drawing yes this is just a drawing is it maybe it isn't maybe it's just a really good picture it might be a CG element all right ooh something like that could be cool All right, nothing too dark, nothing too light. Just trying to find just the right image for this. Okay, um, I could even just do like creepy. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Like that's kind of creepy. These trees are kind of creepy here. All right, I like that. So I'm gonna save this image, drop it into my caricature folder. So I'm just going to grab this whole thing and copy it and paste it into this one at the bottom. Okay, and I can scale it up. <clears throat> All right, now I don't scale it up crazy amount, just a little bit. Let me find a good spot here. I think this light coming in here would add a nice little glow to you know why he has that glow there. All right, so now I need to get these two things to blend a little bit nicer because he's just like full color. This is creepy background. Let me save this real quick. Um, so I'm going to go to my deforms here. And I'm going to put an adjustment layer. So I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. I'm going to Alt click this, and then I can start to play with, you know, the coloring inside of him. So taking this into, you know, this green realm is obviously not what we want to do. Um, here it actually looked like we're getting closer to matching. Yeah. 
not filling it with this hue and saturation. All right, let's delete that. Uh, let me drop on, let's say, a photo filter. Photo filters are nice because it does a really good job of uh, blending the colors. So with here, I can say I want to pick a color, and I can actually just eye drop um, this color here. Now it's not picking it because it's actually picking it from this layer mask. Um, there you go. So I'm going to hold control, and as I click, it'll pick from this image itself. There we go. So you see, just adding that um, filter, we've been able to kind of blend him a little bit nicer into the scene. Okay. So that's neat. Uh, I'll also add maybe a, uh, a curves on it. And I'm alt clicking between these just so it's associated just with Steve and nothing else. There we go. And I think I also want to put maybe a hue and saturation on it and just desaturate him slightly. Come on. There you go. So now you can see how it kind of fits uh, a bit better into that scene. And again, I can always go back to that photo filter and maybe I drop a different color and see if I can get a different look to it and see if I can find one that's going to maybe um, make this image tie together a bit better. Okay? So I think I like the way that looks here. We're kind of matching the same tones in our uh, other image um, inside there. I could do more work on this, but I think we're good there. All right? So my last step in this is I want to write his name. So I'm going to click Steve. That way people know, you know, without a doubt, that it's Steve. Uh, I think I'm actually going to sample this color. Making that a bit bigger. I'm going to go to my text here. Spread it out a bit. And then let's see if we're going to add any effects to it, just to kind of enhance that text a little bit more. Uh, first, I'm going to try an outer glow, just to see what it looks like. Especially for beginners, um, it really helps just to kind of just play around with stuff. Okay, that hurts my eyes, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I think a drop shadow might be nice. Again, you have to look at it and see what it's going to look like. Okay, uh, this one's actually, it's too dark to even see what the drop shadow is doing. I could even try changing this to white though um, and set it to normal. And now I have kind of a glow, but it's a different kind of glow. I think I like the way that looks. I'm going to take this angle off a little bit. There we go. Okay, I like the way that looks. That effect really makes it kind of pop up a bit more. Okay, so it says Steve. Alright, and finally, we'll make a vignette on this. So I'm going to go to my. Uh, tool here. I'm just going to fill this layer with black, draw a circle, there you go. and feather the circle, and then I'm just going to delete. Okay, And then I can go through and just soften the look of that vignette. All right. So there we go. So now I'm just going to save this as Sarcona caricature Steve Semi. Okay, so that's what you're going to be turning in is that file with your stuff in here. Make sure your stuff is organized inside this list. Um, ideally, I want to be able to do this so I can turn on um, the original and turn off it and kind of see, you know, the original where you came from. Okay, so make sure that original is up there. Um, for this one, I'm not going to see your paths. Remember, we created this other one. Have all these paths in it, those are just for you. I'll really be able to see the detail in this when I'm looking at these. Because if I see that he's got a bunch of chunks missing in his head or it's really blocky, I'm going to know that your path is not good. Okay? So there we go. So that's the uh, caricature assignment. Have fun with it because it's you get a lot of freedom, you get a lot of um, ability to start really doing some cool stuff um, 
and it looks neat in, in a very quick sense.